so last week when I was doing the unpopular opinions thing, right? I intentionally moved places in the office uh, because I really wanted to give the vibe of, oh, this is uh, casual and I am not at all uncomfortable in talking about unpopular opinions and you know it's just a cheeky bit of fun all the things and so i went and i sat in what is mr soap and clay's you know place for the podcast and nobody said anything about that but they did talk about the dobby picture that was in there and on the table the entire time so yeah that dobby is awesome it's everything it was made by georgia may one of our old soap apprentices that we all know and love so very much and so yeah i love it but I was more surprised that nobody commented on the fact that there wasn't a wall of Taylor behind me. And honestly, I'm starting to think that I am the only Taylor fanatic in the Sudzer community. That's all. Uh, well, I mean, it's not all all. It does actually have something to do with today's video because while I'm not making a Taylor Swift soap or a Dobby soap or anything, I am following up on a conversation I had with someone in the comments of the Unpopular Opinions video in today's video and I will tell you more about it in just a minute but before I do hello I am Mrs. Soap and Clay let's make stuff How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for a week of follow-up following the reacts, essentially, week, because a lot of questions were raised in response to a lot of the things that we were looking at during that week. And today, we are going to be focusing on a pretty important one, actually, that came from the Unpopular Opinions, you know, video that we did, as I said. And that thing is called, what? actually penetrates through the skin. Now the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because, well, A, it was brought up within the video itself and we had some comments about it within the, you know, comment section, but I was specifically talking to someone in the comment. I'm going to assume that it might be like a language disconnect or something and that's completely understandable. This is a worldwide thing, uh, but I think there may have been some confusion regarding maybe what she was trying to say versus what I was trying to say. And it all involves the skin membrane as well as, you know, how certain things that otherwise would not pass through the skin's membrane can be formulated to then do so. And so I thought that might be an important thing to talk about, you know, what exactly does penetrate through our skin, whether we're talking about a soap or a leave on product, high level. We're doing high level. I'm not going to get too deep into it. I am of course going to be giving you a bunch of links that you can go check out and you can read pages and pages and pages of all of your favorite chemical compounds and all the interesting studies that have been done on them, you know, if you want to. But we're not going to do that here because that's it's kind of deep, you know what I mean? And so let's get to the video. I am going to be making something or stamping something, probably making something, and we can talk more about all of those things. So when we were discussing the unpopular opinions a few weeks ago, we discussed soap as a rinse-off product and the pros and cons of that line of thinking. And the overarching message that I was delivering was that the fancy ingredients that you want to absorb into the skin should be used in a leave-on product more than a soap because soap is a rinse-off product. So don't effectively don't waste your money, you know, on expensive ingredients in your soap if you don't have to. And then I got this comment involving sulfur soap, which is like, I mean, first up, I don't know that providing one example makes for a strong case-closed argument on the entire subject of what the skin absorbs, but 
It does provide an interesting jumping off point to further talk about why soap is a rinse off product and what the skin actually does, you know, absorb. So that's what we're doing today. So, you know, first up, soap's primary function is to clean. Soap is designed to remove dirt, oil, sweat, and other impurities from the skin's surface. It does that by breaking down the oils and the dirt, allowing them to be easily rinsed away with water. Oils, lipid barrier. Keep that in mind, and we're gonna circle back. So next up, what is the skin's primary function? Well, our skin acts as a protective barrier, shielding our internal organs from external threats. It serves as the first line of defense against harmful microorganisms, chemicals, and other potential dangers. The outermost layer of the skin, which is the epidermis, is composed of these tightly packed cells that prevent almost everything, most substances, from entering our body. And it is very, very good at what it does. But it is not impermeable. It can absorb certain substances, such as water, you know, oxygen, right? And, you know, a lot of chemicals, for sure. This absorption can have both positive and negative effects on our health. For instance, the skin, it can absorb good substances like vitamins and medications that are applied topically, which, you know, aid in their delivery to the body. But it can also absorb harm harmful chemicals, toxins, allergens. You know, we talked about that yesterday, which may lead to various health issues also discussed yesterday. So it's important to know kind of what the skin can absorb. And really the answer to that is nano sized particles. So teeniest of tiniest particles. And really with the nano sized particles, we're meaning really those that are fat soluble or easily dissolved in lipids. Remember what I said earlier about the function of soap? To break down lipids and rinse that, all that away? Uh -huh, right. So we're already dealing with like two conflicting things. Small, fat-soluble materials are easily absorbed by the skin. But if said small, fat-soluble material is within a soap that is designed to break down fat-soluble materials, is anything penetrating or is it all being rinsed away? These are things to think about, you know? So that's overarching where I kind of stand with it being you know, a rinse off product, but you know, we can continue on. So really thinking about it all, the two factors we are looking at in regards to skin absorption are particle size and length of time exposed to a material. And I think both of these things have to work in consort in most cases. We can use Mr. Soap and Clay's favorite way to logic this out as an example. So his thing is, while water can be absorbed by the skin, why don't we weigh more after we go for a swim? Well, the absorption rate of water through the skin is a slow process and occurs in tiny, small quantities. And the water that is absorbed is also quickly regulated and eliminated by our body's processes. So, you know, like sweating and, you know, peeing. The skin is always working to eliminate the thing it doesn't want. So any weight gain from water absorption during swimming would be really negligible and temporary and really would be found in the hair and on the surface of the skin, which evaporates or dries off. You get it. So when we mean length of time exposed, it can be quite long depending on the material in question. This is why that transdermal patch argument I've seen bandied about in regards to soap not being a rinse off product doesn't make sense to me. Patches are designed to remain on for extended periods of time and we wash our hands for, you know, 30 seconds three minutes. In regards to all of that, I guess we should actually talk about this sulfur soap, like the example that was given in the comment. And it is a great example for sure, because doctors have prescribed sulfur soaps. Mostly they prescribe ointments, but also soap to eliminate scabies and stuff. And it can be fast acting as the commenter pointed out, like for sure. But there are a couple things here that I kind of have a problem with. I mean, first up, I am speaking to soap makers on this channel, not drug formularies. And simply adding sulfur to a handcrafted soap we make is not going to have the same impact as a medically formulated prescription grade sulfur soap. The reason for this is first, the molecular size of sulfur is pretty large, making it difficult to penetrate into the skin at all and, you know, enter the bloodstream. Sulfur soap primarily acts on the skin's surface where it can reduce excess oil and unclog pores and exhibit, you know, antimicrobial properties like a lot of stuff that we put in our soap. But really, in order to penetrate the skin, it needs to be paired with an excipient, which is basically another material that does easily absorb into the skin in order for the sulfur to pass through the skin's membrane. 
Usually medical grade sulfur soap also contains salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, which can further enhance its absorption. So yes, sulfur can penetrate the skin, but it requires a special formulation to do so, which we are not doing or even allowed to do as soap makers. So circling back, if the materials that are easily absorbed are nano-sized with a lipid component, and soap is designed to break down lipid layers to rinse all the gunk away, is anything in the soap actually penetrating the skin? I mean, I don't know, that's up to you to logic out, but for me, I can't make that logically work in my brain. So thus, I'm in the rinse off product camp. Now that is not to say that there isn't a benefit to the stuff we put in soap as far as the surface level of the skin goes. Like take allergens and proteins, like we talked about yesterday as an example, you know? Like, can your skin have an immediate negative reaction when it comes in contact with an allergen or an irritant? You bet. Because that's the skin's first warning signal to the body that it's being exposed to something that's going to harm it well before that thing, that something, actually enters the bloodstream and does real damage. Well, we know that. We get that, right? Well, the other way is true, too. If the surface of the skin is exposed to something it likes... It's going to, you know, promote some temporary blood flow and some calming measures and all the things. So because no irritation, then benefit. But that's not the same thing as the material actually penetrating the skin. And I think that's the big primary difference here. Maybe we're just talking about two different things. And this is why I really do think all of the, you know, very vitamin rich and antioxidant rich and all the cool stuff that we put into our products are better served to be in a product like a leave-on, like a lotion or a balm or a serum or an ointment or a conditioner or something like that because it's going to be on your hair or skin for much longer than the soap. Now, if it's in the soap, is it bad? No, I don't think it's bad, but also I wouldn't be, you know, banking on that it does anything of consequence to the actual skin. And so that's kind of where I stand with all of it, just, I think, in a high level. And I don't know if any of that really makes sense as far as, you know, what does or does not penetrate the skin. But for me, just kind of logicking it out, I don't, I I can't get there as far as soap being anything other than a rinse-off product. And so that's why I've said, you know, a lot, don't use your super expensive oils for your soap making. You know, obviously, let's have a nice super fat. We don't want to strip the skin and really mess with that acid mantle and we don't want the skin the actual barrier to get all you know wonky all of the time although there are times where you do want the skin to get wonky you know and the barrier and everything to be disrupted like talking about chemical peels and stuff right like putting an acid on your face and then letting it sit for a period of time depending on the potency of the acid and your skin's sensitivity or you know reaction to it and then neutralizing that with like baking soda or an alkaline of some sort in order to, you know, slough off dead skin cells and help promote collagen and elasticity. You're essentially doing damage to your skin in that instance. So there are reasons for that as well. Uh, But the most part, just within a soap, you're not going to really get those benefits. And I don't know. That's just my two cents on it. I obviously want to know your guys' opinion on it. I don't think there's a right and a wrong way with any of this, but I did like that we were having that conversation within the comments, and I did want to use, you know, sulfur soap as an example, because yeah, it's called sulfur soap when we get it from the doctor, but it is a prescription grade, and it does have stuff that we don't usually put into soaps. That's not to say that you can't play around with that stuff. I mean, I wash my face for like a really long time every day, you know what I mean? With a very specialized soap that has all kinds of fun stuff in it, you know? And so we have like acids in it and like oatmeal, all kinds of fun stuff in this particular face soap that I use. And I'm doing all of the rubbing and the mechanical of the whatever to exfoliate, to bring, you know, blood circulation, all of the things. And my skin feels and looks better afterwards, you know, like for sure. But is that actually penetrating the skin? No, I don't think so. I think that's just providing a temporary benefit to your essentially the the surface level. It's all surface level stuff. So if you want stuff that actually penetrates deeply, leave on products. And that's why I believe soap is a rinse off product, you know, for everything that I just said. But also with all this, isn't that cool? 
Aren't they fun? So it's a nice kiss pour hack. You know, I didn't talk at all about the soap yesterday and I feel bad. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing that. So I'll, I, instead of getting the thing out and doing the funnel and all the different colors or getting that one like six cavity divider thing out and doing a kiss pour, I just did this and, you know, just did an in the pot swirl essentially and uh, poured it into the middle of a slab mold and then cut it you know and look it's all it's all fun i've got a weird kind of pumpkin thing going on up there in the kind of top middle and i tried to make a circle with that one it didn't work out but they're all kissy this is the new design for the grapes of bath i've been hating that design for uh, like 10 years and you guys have seen me try to remake it multiple times on the channel with a disa it's disastrous every time but this time hey i think i like it i think this is what i'm gonna move the grapes of bath my one of my wine soaps to from now on. Anyway, it's the, the new design for right now, and I might get bored again. That kind of looks like a palm or a, a, a lotus or a, I don't know, maybe it just looks like a hemp plant. I have no idea. It looks like a plant of some sort. Certainly. There you go. Uh, questions, obviously, put them in the comments. We can continue to have a conversation about this. I am obviously not an expert in any of this. This is just my two cents about Levon products because we had an opportunity to chat about it, and that's cool. Yeah, so I mean, there are a lot of different ways that you can kind of logic out what penetrates the skin and what does not. You know, our bodies are made up of primarily water, right? So why do we not weigh more when we get out of a pool? Which is Mr. Soap and Clay's favorite way of sort of making that make sense. Our skin is designed first and foremost to be our body's first barrier. And so yeah, a lot of stuff does not get in. That's its purpose, its function. However, some things do, or for the things that you really want to get in, this is why they have drug compounds, prescription compounds, chemical compounds to allow some of those beneficial things to come through. And so I hope that this was helpful. I hope that you have a better grasp and an understanding on really kind of what I was touching on within the unpopular opinions when we were talking about soap being a rinse off product and why even within the example that I gave from the comments thread, that still doesn't really track because just by putting sulfur in a soap and just that's not that's not how that works because drug all the things and of course if you're interested in any of the stuff that I've talked about I put a whole bunch of links in all the videos which I always do whenever I'm talking about something that is other than here's a recipe or a design which is most of the time so that's a good place to find all of the information regarding anything I'm ever talking about is in the description box of all of my videos. What you can also find in the description box of all of my videos is a link to join the membership if you want to do that, Spain Project Soapway Challenges, all the things, is uh, an access an access to the Discord, is you know my social media, you know, and my website, those sorts of things. There's stuff in the description box if you're interested. And if you are, hey, thanks for clicking the button and doing the things. If you subscribed, hey thanks for clicking the button and doing the things. Sudzers. You've clicked buttons, you've done things, you've become my friends, my people, all of that. And I appreciate you so much. And I'm glad that you guys all love the Dobby picture, because so do I. And everybody go to TikTok and go, uh, I'll also put that in the description or maybe this pinned comment. Uh, and you guys can all go to Georgia May's TikTok and go say hi. Just on her most recent video, whatever it is, just go say hi from the Sudzers. Just go show her all the love. That would be fun. We should all do that. Yeah, no, I know. I'm weird. But yeah, that would be cool. Go do that. Please, thank you. I'll join you. I am out of here for today, but I'll see all you guys again tomorrow for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.